Well, I actually, um, I can, I, I can speak now. Or I saw that you you were going to have a discussion. Uh, you have the 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 school uh, possible withdrawal. Yeah, no, that's going to be for them to uh, just. They're going to report back that, and uh, if the board has a few questions, we'll ask that. But otherwise, um, the lines will be muted there. So if you want to go ahead and you have something to add uh, tonight, Neil, go ahead. Yeah. Well, the, so the big thing is, and I, I apologize for this, but I I did I sent something out this afternoon. I finally uh, got together that, uh, that that research stuff that I talked about doing at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Did you did you folks did you folks get it? It was literally like an hour ago. No, I've been on the road. I just came in 15 minutes ago, so no. And I don't think no. anyone else has really had the time to sit down and digest anything. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, sorry. I just, uh, one of those time got away from me kind of things. But uh, basically, uh, so I've got just a little, it's like a two-pager. Uh, I sent it to the, the select board address, so I guess that's, that forwards directly to you guys, or Sasha? You'll yep, Sasha will get it, or... and uh, if she hasn't forwarded it already, I'm sure she will first thing in the morning. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so basically, I mean, uh, you can take a look at it. So I've got the just sort of the basic uh, logistics on there. Uh, a couple of the issues come up. Uh, school. Uh, uh, let's see. I guess you get in front of me. I don't even actually have the document in front of me, which is kind of tricky, but, um, uh, let's see, oh, uh, oh, uh, tuitioning out to the uh, 7th through uh, 12th graders, uh, I, I put some tuition rates of some of the schools in the area on, on there, uh, and, yeah, I did, uh, as far as the, the, the other district that, that's, uh, undergoing this process is down, down south, um, Reesboro and Halifax, and they are having their what's it called it like their step two uh, vote. It's going to be on the 11th with the primary. Uh, that's the one where they ratify uh, w whether they're going to withdraw or not. So that's that's where they're at in the process. I think for them it's it's really pretty straightforward. There's actually only two towns in the unified district, and then they're part of a supervisory union. But so. Uh, and they've actually each town has voted already separately, uh, like the step one. So it's kind of a formality, but that's that's where they're at in the process. So uh, they, they haven't really, they're not that far along in it yet. I mean, they haven't, you know, sort of, they haven't finished it yet or anything. But All right. Well, that's, I that's certainly good. appreciate you putting that stuff together, Neil, and uh, the board will take a look at it. I think, um, you know, a lot of what we you know, decide to do, we'll, you know, we'll be working with the school uh, board people here and, you know, find out what, what's going on and, and then see if there's some action that should be taken. But uh, anyways, I appreciate your, your efforts so far. Um, so we'll take a look at this um, and schedule uh, some kind of an outreach meeting to the community accordingly when we, uh, as a board, feel that it's uh, necessary. Sure. Yeah, that would be great. And uh, yeah, and any questions you have on any, you want me to? Um, I, I, it's kind of like bullet points and just a little brief something about each one. So, but anything you want me to flesh out more, just give me a shout, and I'm happy to, to do that. Yeah. All right, great. Does anyone on the board have any questions uh, for Neil? Not at this time. Nope, not now. Nope. Daniel. Uh, <laughs> Kelly. Hey, feel feel free to give me nope. a shout if. Uh, up, so. All right. Well, thank you very much, Neil. Appreciate your time tonight. All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Help. So, um, Take care, John. Moving, yep. Thank you. Uh, moving forward, is there any other uh, public comment? I know uh, Steve just jumped on, Steve Robbins uh, for the Rec Committee. Hello. Um, but other than that, is there anyone else here on the line that has anything to, to share on public comment? All right. How are you tonight, Steve? I'm well. How's everyone there? Well, I think we're all doing good. This weather, we can't complain, right? Absolutely gorgeous summer weather. Can't beat it. Sure. How, how's the real estate market? Um, I, I'm busier than a one-arm paper hanger. I'll bet. <laughs> I understand a lot of out-of-staters are moving here. 
Yeah, and there's always some element to that, but certainly um, Vermont looks good in the, uh, the current situation, I would say. Um, right. Folks want to work from home, and Vermont's not a bad place to call home. Exactly. Nice. So, Steve, do you have anyone else on the committee that will be joining you tonight, or uh, are you going to be um, sharing this stuff by yourself here? I believe I'm solo. Um, uh, I did invite others um, if they wanted to, certainly to weigh in, um, but I don't. I don't expect actually that others will. I don't. I just don't know. All right. Well, if anyone gets on, I, I can see here. I have it up on the computer, cool. um, and I'll encourage them to. Um, to speak if they wish, but um, if you're here and you're ready to go, why don't you uh, go ahead? You're going to certainly talk about the, the mission statement a little bit tonight and then share a little bit about the project that's going on. Um, actually, the, the, the things that I was going to um, update you on were the mission statement. Um, uh, actually, last month we sent to something. I don't know if it ever made it up to you guys yep. about a state request document that talked about some field mowing, basically – um, you know, maintenance stuff. Um, and then there was a couple other bullets when I did attend last week during the uh, last month in the public section. Uh, John said that they were looking for a subcommittee, so I brought that up at our last meeting. Um, that's with regard to updating the forestry plan on the town uh, sure. forest. Yeah, okay. And there may be a, just a couple other bullets, but I'm, I'm not going to speak to the the project, if that's what you're talking about out back with the, um, the skills park and the trails upgrade, because that was something that I did um, rely heavily on John Atkinson to give you the, 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 the most detailed and up-to-the-moment info. Okay. That's that's fine. Um, and if we have, if people have questions about it, um, I'll they, do my can, they can ask you if they, you can't answer. But otherwise, it would be nice um, to have John maybe – can reach out uh, to him as a as a director there to um, at our next meeting maybe come in and uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what what the project entails. Absolutely, and I'm also pressing um, our secretary Chris to get the minutes done as quickly as possible because if we get those posted, it is it is a subject at every meeting now, of course, and you know, and some of what John says in those meetings gets reflected in our minutes. Cool. Very good. All right, so one. Why don't you go ahead and start? So um, when I found myself sort of the, the only man standing forward when, when uh, others left um, the vacancy for, you know, kind of a chair, um, I, I reflected on what I um, have enjoyed on this committee over the last uh, couple of three years, but also um, on what some of the folks that have come and gone had said, and I thought, that it was a really good idea for us to, in a basic way, define who we think we are. Um, and the best way to do that, I think, is in a mission statement. We under, uh, I don't know, it was probably over the course of a couple months, um, a couple meetings where we talked about what we should be doing or what we want to be doing and not, and we um, came up with this, uh, I'll call it a draft, for you guys to approve, mission statement. And again, I don't. Do you guys have anything printed in front of you, or did, did, did that circulate? Did, they, did everyone um, get a chance? I was trying to look to see when that, that was sent out. I, Sasha, um, I, I sent an email, and she admitted that's why I didn't make it to the last time when I showed up. Yep. She subsequently found it, and I thought maybe advanced it to everybody. But I, I'm certainly ready to read it. But I thought it would be easier if we all could read along. Yeah, I think I, I have it up, but why don't you go ahead and read it for everyone's uh, benefit, Steve, if you mind. Here we go. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Great. Yep. The mission of the Moortown Recreation Committee supports the use, stewardship, enhancement, and enjoyment of the town property and resources for recreation, conservation, and educational purposes, including the ball field, sport, trails, and town forest. Kind of long. I don't think that's too long. John, what, um, any comments? That sounds good to me, really. It's yeah. very straightforward. <clears throat> Don, what about you? I know you're heavily involved in that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah it sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah. good. 
Sally, you like it? It sounds good. Well, there you go, Steve. I think everyone, uh, uh, there's unanimous uh, agreement that everyone thinks that you've done a great job with that. Well, that's great. Um, that will, I guess, get reflected in your minutes, and we'll, you know, quote, unquote, adopt this as a, as a mission statement. I mean, we don't have any other big uh, you know, documents that we rely on as a, as a, as a committee, but um, I think it's good to have at least a, um, a mission statement. So, great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, so, interestingly, um, something that's gotten uh, the attention of our committee over the last n really many number of months, th this discussion started easily a year ago. I wouldn't say every time we meet, but came and went. Uh, and that was the idea of what our role would be in the sense of um, doing just, um, you know, suggesting things to the select board and then having you say yay or nay. And one of, and one of those, uh, I would say, call it maintenance issues is field mowing. Um, again, there's a, there's a whole paragraph that was written, and I can read it, but th the idea was that we have, um, I guess, an opinion on how the field uh, and some of the uh, um, areas would be mowed, and it included um, actually talking to a couple of your neighbors right here, or our neighbors, uh, the Schultzes, and the other gentleman name's going to escape me that has the chicken coop that's next door there to the town clerk's office proper. Yeah. Um, Colin Brown and, and, uh, and Becky. Um, Becky Eau Claire. Um, gosh, no. <laughs> um, uh, he's he's uh, kid, He's like next to the church on the other side of the driveway. Um, his backyard. Down oh, someone had a closing door. Yeah, I think it's he's next to the St. Patrick's. Yeah. Yeah, that's Howlin Brown. Howlin, yes, that's Howlin, yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. So at any rate, um, the concept being, um, and again, we're not so much talking about the ball fields, if you will, not the soccer field, not the baseball field, and, and not um, areas around where the swing steps they are out, out behind, you know, uh, that area. Um, but you know the side hills, let's call it, and the back pastures, and the and the and the more wild areas, or potentially wild areas. Um, and there was sort of a uh, universal idea that um, they could be mowed less often and later. Um, is sort of the theme. And again, if you want me to read this entire section about field mowing, I could. No, I don't. I um, I think that's necessary, Steve. Um. How many times, and this is something that uh, maybe we should know, or I, I just don't know, how many times is it being mowed now up there on the hill? It's been two or three times already this season, for instance, uh, at least twice, if not three. Um, and Susan is, I, I thank our, our, our member Susan, who literally lives in the village, and she's yep. there all the time, and so she kind of keeps a running uh, a tally. Um, I would say over the course of the summer, easily they could it could be uh, three to five times. Um, the mo you know, up behind the court, the upper field, the side hill um, where the kids sled and whatnot. And then interestingly, the subject of the area again between um, where the the clerk's office proper and Schultz and how on there, um, you know, way back when that was kept down, the kids used it a lot. Um, the feeling is it isn't so much now, and they both wouldn't mind letting it go a little higher with the exception of having a trail that would allow them to go from sort of their backyards up, up and connect um, so they wouldn't have to walk through um, waist deep. So they, you know, they both individually said that would, that would be great if it, was, if it was let go a little while. They wouldn't mind, but they would like a little, um, like a narrow strip cut that would allow them to um, connect on back up to the road behind the clerk's office. Mm -hmm. What, uh, as, as board members, what is everyone, uh, what's everyone's opinion on this? I'm not uh, sure I'm, I'm clear on what the question is. What, what are we, what's the question? The question is whether we should mow the upper fields and the side hill um, less often. 
So right now, as uh, Steve just went through, they're doing it five, perhaps six times in a season, uh, based on what they've seen in, in as a rec committee. They're recommending what one to two times, Steve? Maybe. Um, maybe I should read just a couple of things from it because sure. it doesn't hurt. Um, Seasonal mowing areas should be pushed later in the year with the goal of reducing the amount of mowing, not supporting a specific use. This should save town resources, reduce emissions, and foster a healthy insect and wildlife habitat. Um, ground nesting birds may find the site favorable. Related state programs to protect the nesting season are designed to prevent mowing between May 15th and August 1st. I'll repeat, reduce and prevent mowing between May 15th and August 1st. Late summer fall mowings benefit the sledding and related sports on the hill above the baseball diamond and in the spring, the school uses some of the fields for recesses uh, primarily in May and June. The recommendation from the community to the select board, mow the lower flat fields and access paths to the town forest trails as, as normal. Mow the septic area as little as required to support that system, ideally only once or twice per season. Mow the slopes above the baseball diamond in August and again in September. Stop mowing above the tennis courts until September, if you can. All right, so I think that's okay. fairly That clear. sounds reasonable to me. What's absent from that list, and again, this was sort of an afterthought, Meg Schultz attended our meeting as did Howland, and, 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 uh, and specifically as sort of an invitation, we had sort of informally polled them and then invited them to come to a meeting. Um, and, and so, again, I don't know if our minutes are up to reflect that, but, and again, there are neighbors, literally all of our neighbors, so um, certainly if the town wanted to poll those neighbors and others to get opinions, so that might be appropriate. Um, so um, we're, 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 we're maybe just trying to be a um, um, uh, an impetus for discussion, let's say. You know, we think it's a, a reasonable discussion point. Um, there may be some benefits, and we're certainly interested. You know, the, the, the counter response we heard from one element was, we've got to mow all the time to keep the ticks down. Um, but you know, I'm not certain that the state and the science actually completely support uh, that as a as a as, as a as a linchpin to whether ticks thrive or not. Okay. All right. But certainly, uh, you said something about mowing a path because I did receive an e email from Meg, and um, she said we are supportive of less less frequent mowing. However, we are also concerned about increasing tick and mosquito populations as a result and my mother loves to walk back there but isn't sure good enough anymore to navigate through tall grass i would like to learn what options are being discussed so we can give you feedback before decisions are made there you go so i, I think i think mowing a path would, would uh um you know be a good idea that would pretty much you know john what i think solve all um, the issues you know, one thing that we could do is, you know, one or two of us or, or everyone, if they if they wished, could um, contact the neighbors and, and get together and meet uh, prior to maybe the next meeting. Or ac actually, no, I don't want to get so many people together, if, even if we start um, person. But one or two of the board members could meet with uh, the Schultz's uh, people around there, ask what their opinion is, and also with with Martin and um, who's doing the mowing and, you know, get the opinion of them as well. And then we can uh, bring it back and have a discussion about it if that works for everyone. That sounds good, Doc. Good. And we can I would it. also add in there, if people are worried about ticks, I know we treat with a triazicide because we're right on the outside of the forest and you just lay it down it's safe it's pet safe once you lay it down and we don't have a tick problem all year what what is it i'm, I'm sorry i didn't hear you it's a triazicide <laughs> so it's in a green bag you can get a bag at tractor supply usually a bag does a solid it does the border of our property, so it's probably like five acres, but you just lay it down and it goes in and it it works for ticks, it works for some other insects. I don't know if that would work, but 
I think that's something to, um, as we're making decisions on things, something to take a look at, certainly, Kelly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Is there anyone um, that wants to, to be on this um, walking committee or meet with the neighbors? I would, uh, I'd, I'd volunteer for that, Tom. All right, Ray. How about you and I, Ray, do that? Sounds good. All right, and I'll we'll talk offline, and we'll figure out when we can do that before uh, the next meeting. Okay. Right. Thank you for taking that up. Can I make two other real quick bullets, and then I'll sure. run away? Absolutely, Steve. Um, at the last meeting of your meeting, John mentioned a subcommittee for review of an updated forestry management plan on the town forest and said that um, you would like uh, some volunteers <coughs> to join others. Yes. I, I brought that up at our last um, meeting, and both John Atkinson and Chris Stevenson raised their hands, as I did. Um, and I would take a back seat if you wanted only two. I would, I would go ahead and let those guys um, charge. Um, I was around for the original write-up of it, so, um, but I don't, you know, how, however you want to do that. And once that gets going, um, feel free to send out an invite. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any limit on the numbers, so that would be fine. It's obviously something that's central to our whole, you know, what we're doing. So, you know, with the trails and the forest and everything else. So that, um, that's, there's some passion there. No, I think that's um, certainly that's fine, as John said. The more the merrier. I think the more people are putting their, their heads together that um, will produce the best um, document here. Great. One other sort of a protocol question for you all, and that is, um, given the nature of the committee, there was a universal desire uh, for us to meet socially distanced um, with masks on outside under the kiosk, um, sort of huddled as far as apart as we could on those tables um, that are out there. And I suggested that maybe that's not something that the town would prefer that we do, um, whether it's you know, setting a bad example or otherwise. So I, I thought it was uh, reasonable to maybe throw that up to you guys to see if you have an opinion on that or not. Uh, well, Steve, you know, thanks for bringing that up. And that's something I'm going to um, talk about in our communications or, or, or new business later um, as we go forward, how we want to continue, continue uh, conducting meetings, whether it's um, conference calls or some type of social distancing. Um, so okay. let's table that. I, I think um, there's there's opportunity there, just you know, saying right now. But let's wait for the whole board to weigh in, and we'll do that a little bit later in the meeting. Perfect. That's all I got. Unless you have questions. All right. Um, does anyone have questions for Steve as far as um, what he's uh, chatted about tonight? Yeah, um, I have one. I other. Uh, John Atkinson has been talking about um, perhaps forming a conservation commission. Um, and so I was wondering if that's been kicked around with the rec committee. It has. Okay. Actually, uh, um, on two different occasions, it was actually a vote. Um, and um, it was, I would say the first was a pretty solid no as far as rolling that into something that this that this committee would undertake. And that was before um, uh, we had a changeover of the current makeup of folks. Right. So when Dwayne was leading, um, when Sal um, was on the board, I actually brought it up as a discussion item um, a, a, as a, um, there was a citizen group that was meeting regularly, John, I think as you know, that was concerned about the, maybe the, um, the ridge line in Moortown and some other significant. Right, correct, yeah. yeah. An acknowledgement that actually of the, of the other valley towns, Moortown Town. doesn't have an actual recreation committee where they're charged different from the mission statement that we just uh, passed as a, as a recreation committee is, is purely for, I think, identification and securing, if you will, of, of, of lands. I mean, that's what a lot of recreation conservation commissions do. Mm -hmm. um, so the, uh, on a second account, when this group got together and we passed this mission statement, was the other time, obviously, that it came up for discussion. And there was pretty much universal discussion, uh, or um, um, rather, rather a commitment by all, that we shouldn't m mix our purpose of a conservation 
directive, which is a, could be an all-encompassing directive from a recreation um, element. Uh, the, the word conservation appears in that mission statement, but it's not our central. Uh, we, uh, nobody felt like it should be our central. Right, right. No, and I, and I understand that, and, and, and what uh, John was suggesting, because he actually, um, I guess, mentioned it to Corey Miller, and um, I think that the, the uh, idea was to have it completely separate from the, the rec committee. Um, but especially since we have acquired this new parcel, um, it does seem, and we're the only valley town that does not have one, it seems to me to make sense. So yeah, that's something that... I'm with you on this, John. You know, I think that you could find some great people from within our town, just like we've seen on other committees, that might be willing to serve on such a uh, committee, you know. Right. I don't think right. you would have trouble getting five to seven folks um, if you put out the word of a, of a new committee. Right. Right. So, John, on that, if that's something, and maybe, maybe Steve, maybe you could help John and, and put together a statement for for that for, committee. For. Um, so we, if we want to go out and look for some of those people, we know exactly what you guys um, are thinking. I'm happy to talk sidebar about it, but you know, I'm just going to plagiarize one of the. I'm going to take the other two, three towns, and I'm going to probably morph it into. <laughs> yeah, there's no I, sense of reinventing the wheel here, right? right. And I, I can reach out to uh, Karen Horn too in terms of, of the, um, you know, the process, because I know there is a process to to form one and so on. Mm -hmm. All right, so, Sasha, why don't you put that on um, on old business and, and John and if you and Steve want to, you know, when you can in the next month or so get together on that and just come up with something. Okay. All right. Um, if there's no other questions for Steve, we'll uh, we'll move on. But Steve, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, all the time you've been putting in, and uh, uh, thanks for reporting out. You're welcome, and I'll follow up with John Atkinson on that ongoing project for y'all. Very good, thanks. Okay, you guys have a great night. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Coming off. All right. So now um, at 6:30 we have coming up um, the school board, um, and we have Kristen uh, Rogers and Lisa Mason. I'm not sure if Lisa's on. I don't. I am. Oh, just jump on, yeah. Hi, Lisa. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm sorry. I thought I, I wrote the wrong time in my calendar, but I thought I made this oh. portion. Oh no, no, no! You uh, you've been on when 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 you guys were on. So um, as a board, we appreciate. Also, I I I want to apologize for the car sound. I'm down at Couples Field. Baseball practice just started today, so that was me. Sorry about that. Oh no, no, that's all right. <laughs> that's well, those things happen all the time in these these days. Uh, life goes on. We still need to uh, communicate here. So, uh, thank you, ladies, for taking the time to join us tonight. Um, we have had as a board some questions, you know, moving forward. You know, you know what's going on. Um, so, if you had a moment, what we do is maybe give you a couple of minutes to give us a state of the union, and then. If anyone on the board has questions, we'll we'll fire away, but we won't certainly put you on the spot with anything um, too serious. But you know, feel free to let us know what you're thinking and in what way, as a board, we can support you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go okay. first, Kristen, or do you want me to? Um, I can kind of uh, touch on a few things. Um, so at the last meeting of the season, I should say the school uh, school board season. There was a pre-K through 12 uh, timeline that was presented to the board from a subcommittee um, for reconfiguration. And I actually printed that out because there was a very particular paragraph that um, I wanted you guys to be aware of. I, I listened to the last select board meeting um, in preparation for this one. And I know that, you know, talking about the more Town 5 and 6, so is it okay if I just read this one particular yeah, paragraph sure, no, to you guys? Ahead, Is that okay? Yeah. So this was kind of um, the pre-K through 12 committee report. So um, it's under the category summarized below are a couple of key points from our conversations. So it said, in lieu of warning, warnings from the uh, state leaders about dire economic forecast for FY22, 
committee recommends that the board should affirm probably in October or November that consolidating the seventh and eighth grades would likely be the only configuration change implemented in the 2021-22 school year, unless the financial situation caused by COVID is so dire that the board believes it needs to be, it needs to do more that year. This does not take further configuration changes off the table, but assumes that discussion about next steps in the other two elements of the pre-K through 12 plan, more town five and six closure, fate and uh, more town five six, and closure of face then would be taken up at a later time as determined by the board. So that was kind of um, something that was very concerning to me because it had sounded like that they were going to try to do these reconfiguration in steps. And chime in, Lisa, if I'm kind of misinterpreting. Mm -hmm. um, so the first step would be the reconfiguration of 7th and 8th, and then it sounded to me like maybe the following year might be reconfiguration of 5 and 6, unless the, uh, what was it, the uh, financial situation caused that move to happen sooner. So I just want to make you guys aware of that, first of all. Uh, Lisa, do you have anything to add to that particular thing that I might be missing? No, that summed it up. I mean, I think that the rationale behind breaking up into parts is that they're thinking that they'll have less of a kind of voting block of the public against it if they if it's not all lumped together. Um, and so seeing the most support in the community for the merging of 7-8, that's the one they're willing to tackle first, and that would be the most savings. And then they're hoping that by taking on the other two separately, I think, isn't just there just might not be enough people that get up an arm to really be able to make a difference in whether that moves forward. Um, that's yep. the impression I get. Yeah, that's what I would I would also agree with that um, your impression too, Lisa. Mm -hmm. yeah. And who who comprises this subcommittee? Currently, it's um, Tari, Jonathan, um, Tim, and Jeremy. Jeremy. So it's just board members. Yes. Okay. Yes. But certainly, I, I mean to be fair, there's, the there's just that, uh, as Maureen McCracken points out in the Valley Reporter, that they were uh, going to explore the different options rather than going forward with an option that you know has already been voted down, even though the other yes. left out. So, so to be fair, that subcommittee is just the timeline. That, that there would be a, a committee composed of non-board members, mm -hmm. you know, and they would reach out to the community, which is what the community wants them to do. So that's not happening, is it? But I John, think I think happening. she was just clarifying that um, uh, that committee is just on timeline. Is that correct, Lisa? Yeah, or so that committee came together just to put forth a timeline to the board. Um, but that timeline is pretty crunched. So it's like there's going to be some discussion time in the fall, but then really they're, they're recommending and like the board approved basically voting on whether it's going to happen or not in October by October so you're correct in that there doesn't seem to be really any time worked in for there to be any further just exploration or discussion it is kind of seems right. to be assumed right correct yeah yeah so well, certainly if, uh, if others haven't read that from Maureen McCracken they should because you know, she she makes some very good points, mm -hmm. as as mm -hmm. she always has. Yeah. So, as yeah. a, is there anything else that um, you guys feel that's important that we may uh, need, need to know or should know? No, I mean, as it pertains specifically to Morton, I'm not thinking of anything um, that's on the table right now. I do think that the the last meeting, if anyone is interested in watching it. There was a really interesting discussion about um, the, the raising of the Black Lives Matter flag um, that was quite complex and nuanced and didn't come across very well in the like board report of what happened. Um, so I'd be happy to explain a little bit more about it or if people are interested in watching, I recommend it. Yeah, why don't you take a minute and, uh, or a couple yeah. minutes, whatever it takes to tell Yeah, us so there's, there's a, 
a, a task force, for lack of a better word, <laughs> that has been um, formed um, that's comprised of Tom Greek and um, Sarah Schoolcraft, which are the two administrators over at Crossy Brook. And they are they formed a task force to really try to um, come together around the issues of anti-racism within the district. And they, um, you know, it didn't seem like there'd been a ton of work done, but they were really trying to get the momentum going. And they came to the board with a proposal or a motion to um, raise the Black Lives Matter flag across the district at every school off campus. And at first, it really, you know, like, I don't think there was anybody on the board who was thinking that that wasn't a good idea. But as we heard more in public comment about um, the fact or the idea that it really needs to be something that the people of color in our community are initiating, or at least part of the conversation, um, to have those flags raised without that conversation and that inclusion happening first, then it can really feel like a token that's not substantiated with real action um, and actually do more harm to the people who are already feeling marginalized um, than, so, the, so kind of the, the impact of that action was not good intention um, or could possibly not be. So it came down to a really narrow vote and we decided to not raise the lives at this time and really try to encourage the task force to include community members and school school students that um, that would be most affected by it. So um, it certainly doesn't take it off the table for the future, but it was just kind of a little bit of an eye opening of like, you know, the, the, the white people in power can't just make these decisions without really doing the work to include the people who need to be in the conversation. No, I, I, I agree with you. And, and thanks for taking the moment to explain that. I think like you said, if you just read you know, a headline or, or something like that. You, yeah. Um, you'd be very um, disappointed with what you see, and but uh, no, I think your rationale is, is very sound. Yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. I learned a lot just from just from the discussion and hearing from the public who is a little bit deep farther along in their work than I am. Um, nice to hear. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Any other specific questions? Yeah, I, I, hi, it's Don Wexler. I wanted to, yeah. I'm just curious, like, how do you, uh, if you both could just give us an idea, how, what's your thinking on going forward, being on the board, some of the challenges ahead on the board as far as what we will do in terms of the state and the mandate and the money that's involved in keeping schools running, and whether the reality is that maybe that is the reality that we have to uh, do something with the five, fifth and sixth grades, you know, and that it, we can't keep going on the way we're going or we, we can. And, uh, actually, I'm quite confused. I'm, I'm not quite sure how we should proceed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kristen, do you want to go first on that? Uh, sure. So, I mean, I, there are some definite um, big concerns for me as far as, um, I don't see a bond coming down the pipeline anytime soon. So a big concern for me is um, the idea that you have to have annexes at Crossett Brook to accommodate children. And then you have a partially empty building at the high school that has there, there's no money to, to, to do anything with. The other concern is that, you know, as a parent of a child going into sixth grade, and if this merger and stuff had been a, you know, if it had passed at the budget, I never understood what my son's education at Moortown was lacking and what he would have gotten at Cross at Brook. Mm -hmm. So I think that there needs to be a good explanation of what the children, if they are going to be moved to Cross at Brook, the fifth and sixth, what is it that they're getting? I mean, it's never been, uh, I, I don't feel, uh, maybe, I know Lisa's been sitting in on meetings before she got on the board. I, I don't feel like that was ever explained. It was just because they should. It's just, um, so I, I look at that as, as as a person that if if I wasn't on the board and even on the board would take a lot of convincing as to why I should be in favor of moving kids other than, yeah, let's just move them. You know, it's again, it's, um, is it in the best educational experience for our kids to be in these annexes for an indefinite amount of time with a partially empty building? 
you know, there's, so the, those are big concerns for me. Um, th those are th those are the main things. I mean, I don't I don't know what the state is going to look like in the in the fall, and I do understand about you know taxes and things like that. But I'm just not sure if certain changes need to happen if it's really what's in the best interest of our children for their education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you. And yeah. I did tell the committee, I, 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 I said that they're actually going to have a pre-K through 12 committee meeting tonight from 7 to 9. I sat in on the first, well, I sat in on two of them. And the first one, I chimed in, I said, you've got to sell it. Again, I said, like, five and six, you, you've got to sell it if you're going to want to move these kids. What are those children going to get at Crossett Brook that's so lacking at Moortown? Because I don't see it. Nobody's ever told me other than they should just move. So that that's a that's a concern to me. Yep, I hear you. Yep. Yeah. For me, um, I, I hear the same concerns around the uncertainty of a bond and and the final money that would be needed to really make this move be a positive one. The biggest thing that I keep coming back to are two big things is that, like John alluded to, there, the community absolutely needs to be behind this before it's going to be successful. Um, so I don't see a path towards major reconfigurations um, that doesn't involve coming together with the people who are, you know, in our community and, and deciding this is the right path for us. Um, and that just really hasn't happened, and I don't see a ton of really legitimate efforts to make that happen in the future. So that's really concerning to me. Um, and then the second thing is really around the kind of idea that we do have declining enrollment and that's really affecting our cost of people and our um, taxes. And I see the need to really look, take a deep dive and look at where we can be cutting costs. But I think the other half of the equation that we're not addressing is how do we really strategically create a plan for our district that increases enrollment, or at least stems the decreasing enrollment. Um, so I think that there's two, there's two parts to this equation, and we're really focusing on one. And I don't think that that's I'm not saying it's not um, an important part to be looking at, but I also really want us to be looking at the other as well, and, and making strategic moves that are going to put us in the place we want to be in 10 years, not just with less schools and, and still decreasing enrollment. Um, right. Yeah. So, that's kind of my thinking, yeah. yeah, especially there's, there's probably going to be an impact with that there's more people moving to Vermont, and hopefully some of those are young people who are going to need to have their children in school. So, right. you know, um, uh, and the and another comment I would have, it would seem to be that there there should be a little bit more time spent and uh, educating people on and and people discussing what the options are as we mm -hmm. go forward, really, and, and not have it just seem like it was being rushed right into, at least from my perspective. Yeah, I think unfortunately yeah. the board, the people that have been on the board for a long time feel like that they've done that work, but they were doing it at a time when the community wasn't really aware that they were doing it. So even though they feel like they did that work, they, you know, there's a disconnect between what has happened and what, the community was really able to get their input into. So I think that's a big problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, I um, remind the everybody, thing? I mean, you know, as, as Lisa said, you know, like a 10-year time frame, we're under a two-year time frame with the mm -hmm. superintendent getting an, an extra year. The first mm -hmm. year is to consolidate the two junior uh, middle schools. The second year is to close Faison and remove more towns five and six. You know, it's mm -hmm. as simple as that. And, um, you know, once, once again, I, it, it sounds to me like, um, you know, with, with the final meeting of the season, which I still don't understand why the summer is off, especially when there's so many important things to discuss. We don't take the summer off. But at any rate, it's neither here nor there. Um, um, you know, just, just the fact that um, – um, now I lost my train of thought because I was thinking of that. <laughs> it's but, a two-year time frame. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, the, the superintendent 
still wants her own wish, and you know, un unless the entire board, you know, take takes the the role that they're supposed to do, and being her boss, and only taking recommendations but not following all the recommendations, you know, that plan is gonna that plan is gonna happen. And certainly, I, I thank the two of you so very much um, for all that you do and for having such strong backbone. But unfortunately, you're in the minority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I really think we honestly need to have our eye on March already and really getting some candidates into the open seats that, that might change this right. um, voting test block. Because I don't see yeah. much happening until that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Well, I think that's a good strategy right there. Um, if people aren't happy with what what's coming out, then you need to change the, the board. So, um, yep. and unfortunately, you were everyone, even with this last election, thought that there would be, um, you know, some eye opening, and even with the budget going down, there'd be a little bit mm -hmm. of uh, reflection on on what they're doing, and, and apparently not. Nope. Nope. Well, uh, again, thank you very much for taking the time um, out of your schedule to spend with us tonight. Um, yeah. But unless anyone yeah. else has any other questions or do you have any other comments you wanted to make, um, we'll move on. No, I mean, I think that your the involvement that you guys have with the board um, is really powerful, and, and I commend you for sending the letter and the putting the confidence. Um, you know, it, it, it can feel really like you're just, banging your head against the wall since it never really goes anywhere, but I still think it's important. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for having the interest and in trying to stay up to date and all of that. All right. And I would well, totally agree with Lisa. Thank you, Lisa, for saying that. Thank you. Very, very good. Well, all thank right. you. And, and as you, you pay attention a little bit to our meetings, we're looking at different options. And as we start moving forward, we'll keep you informed and, and yeah, look for your, your input as well. Please do. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. All right. <coughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have, right. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. You as well. You too. All right. So um, I'm going to move forward uh, into reports. <coughs> what do you got uh, reports for us? Did you say me? Sasha. Sasha. Oh. Sasha. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, Geraldine and I were seeing that. Uh, the maple tree down by the mailbox at the town office looks like it's dead. I'm wondering if maybe John could take a look at it. Okay. It was part of the grant, so it needs to be addressed, I guess. Okay. I'll be uh, down there tomorrow. I'll check it out. Okay. And I wanted to see if you guys want me to invite Ray and Mandy to the next meeting so we can get the MOU. Right yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Okay. Um, and the email I'll that I got. Yeah. Sorry. No, you were going to uh, share that email you got from Ann McMillan? Yes. Yeah. I, um, I forwarded it to everybody. I don't know if everybody had a chance to read it or not. The concern is if the board is going to make it mandatory to wear masks. Yeah, that, that's something I was going to bring up tonight anyway. So, um, And also, a, uh, Sheila Getzinger had a, a post in Front Porch Forum regarding that. I didn't see that. Um, but, so why don't we go ahead and um, just say that right now. So, uh, Sasha, am I correct? Um, Warren has already um, instituted that policy? That's what I've heard. I don't know it for fact. Yeah. No, that's correct. They have. It's, it was in the Valley Recorder this past week that they have. All right. Did anyone – I didn't read the Valley Recorder. This I didn't week. either. Is there any uh, – what was the – what was their justification and why were they doing it? Their justification well, they, was that it's the right thing to do. And what is, what is, it, what is it that they decided upon? Do you want me to read it to you? It's an, an ordinance, a face mask ordinance. I can read the article in the Valley Reporter because I have it. Well, I guess yeah, I don't want to. They, they basically are saying that they want people to wear masks 
when going into restaurants until they're seated at the table, going into stores, and, uh, you know, any public places that, you know, people from afar and locals to protect, you know, as people travel into people's communities and people who live in the communities to respect each other and, and take care of each other. That's sort of basically what I think they're after in war. All right. So, John, you said you were going to bring it up. What's your thoughts? Um, well, certainly I've only been in the Moortown store once since this all started, and I was really horrified at the lack of uh, face masks. And um, both both patrons and uh, employees. So I'm, I'm not going in there until, you know, well, basically I'm not going in there again. Uh, same with Obishan, which is in Moortown. Um, same thing. And, um, you know, even though there are signs requesting it, it's not mandatory. Um, and, I, I, you know, I, I know I've brought this up, Ray, and I hate to be a stickler on this, but, you know, your employees, you know, they're, they're not wearing face masks. And you know, I see them after, after hours. They all get together, and they're all really close and so on and so forth. And, you know, we've already been called out on it by people going through town. Um, I just think it's time. So what is our enforcement going to look like for this? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I would, I would like to hear from Warren in terms of, of what they're doing to enforce that. Um, but I would, I would assume that, um, you know, number one, the employees, it's absolutely mandatory. And number two, um, any patrons that come in shouldn't be allowed to enter without a face mask. But who is going to enforce that? Because as a state employee contracted through the state for all my family times that I do face masks everyone should be wearing them but if a parent decides that they don't want to do that there is nothing I can do about it we can have a conversation but I can't cancel any time so what you're looking at in stores and public places is asking employees to do this and I can tell you employees in Montpelier where there's an ordinance yeah aren't doing it. They're not because employees don't want to deal with any backlash. Right, right. About that for people because they're going to be going to be giving well, a hard time and management isn't always necessarily there. And I mean law enforcement isn't going to do anything with it. I think with with an ordinance or something like that, it's 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 kind of like a, a padlock, you know. It keeps the honest people out, or it'll, it'll keep the honest people doing it, or the people that have a conscience will will put on their mask. I mean, it, it, you could put all the laws in the books, and there's some people that are just not going to do it because they're not going to be told what to do or or such, and, and they don't give a crap about other people. So, um, but if you do pass an ordinance, it is something that. You know, it's it's certainly stronger than uh, suggestions uh, to do it. So, I think there's there's some validity behind this request. I think there should be some more research into it. I don't think it's something that we can make a decision tonight on it. But I think we should gather some information and at our next meeting um, discuss it and make a decision. I think if we're going to do that, we should also have the store managers there to weigh in on part of this and what they want to do for enforcement because ultimately it's going to come back on them. No, I think part of I think part of that research Kelly and I think you you you're right on it is is including um the Moortown General Store in that because that there that's the biggest area of uh, public um gathering in, in the village and then certainly as John mentioned Obershams on the other side of town. So yeah. Um, those are kind of the target areas, uh, so we'd want to make sure that we include uh, those people in on the conversation. Now, unfortunately, with Overshawn, they don't have a store manager, uh, and that, that that place is it's really something else. I mean, nobody yeah. knows what's going on there. But when I went in there the uh, the other day to Overshawn, all the people in there were wearing a mask. The workers were all wearing, but the employees, right? You know? Right. Well, I well. 
Yeah, I mean, they they all had masks on, and yeah. and I had one, and a couple others out there, and I probably did see one person in there without his mask, but uh, basically it was pretty pretty masked up. Uh huh. Well, that's, so that's that, that was there. my experience, you know. Yeah, I've only been in there once. Yeah, well, the times I was in there, one of the uh, one of the employees um, had his mask, but it was <laughs> under his mouth. So that didn't do much good. Right. All right. So well, why don't um, and, and Sasha, I'll ask you to help um, gather some of this information. You and I can talk offline. But if anyone has um, some information um, they want to share with the board prior to next meeting, or, or some stuff that they have gathered, please get it to Sasha. Um, and it's something that we can uh, discuss and make a, um, a decision on. And, and Sasha, if you could reach out to Warren and uh, find out, you know, what their ordinance is and, and kind of a little bit behind it, if you will. Okay. I tried to touch base with Rita today, but I didn't hear back from her just because uh, she's the easiest person I have, the town clerk in Warren, just to see yeah. more information about it before tonight, but I didn't hear back from her. So if I hear anything back, I'll send it on. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Um, and, if yeah, I can just chime in, yeah, go ahead, John. Do, do, I'm wondering, you know, actually I've, I've been seeing some of this or reading this about the masks. I mean, we might be looking at some of our students going back to school wearing masks. I mean, yes, the, you know, the, the masks, if we listen to our health experts, it's washing our hands, wearing our masks and social distancing. That's what the, Secretary of Health Levine and for Vermont has been telling us all along. So what we're really asking, and I don't know if this is an ordinance that has to do it, is we're asking people to respect that and, you know, I don't know, and then maybe yes, bringing in the owner or manager of uh, Jolly's there to say, you know, what's Jolly's policy through the state? We're not the only Jolly's. They must have 10 of them in Vermont. You know, what are they doing? Yeah, that's so, cool. Yeah. Um, and in any event, it's it's unfortunate that the mass thing has become a real, you know, it's been politicized for sure. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. We know uh, where that's going. Anyway, yeah, let's see what we can figure out in another two weeks because it's better for everybody if we if we can figure out something that works. You know, I mean, and maybe we'll even hear that the schools are going to be wearing masks by then. I don't know. No, I, I agree. I think, as you said, the recommendations are coming down, recommending it. So um, I think there needs to be a lot of good reasons not to, but we wouldn't uh, do something. But let's let's see what's out there. Okay. And I, I, if I take just one more second, uh, Ray, not to put you on the spot, but what's your company's policy? Because when I go through town, I hardly see any of that crew wearing masks. I mean, one or two guys. I'm just curious what what the co your company's policy is. The company policy is if you don't have your I'm sorry, you broke up. What was that? The company policy is they do not have the six foot separation. They shouldn't. They should be wearing a mask. However, there is other safety factors to consider uh, if they can. I, I, you know, as long as they can safely wear a mask, they should be wearing a mask if they if they can't keep their six foot separation. Yeah. No, listen, it's got to be wicked difficult to do. You're working, it's hot, you're all five and three yeah, guys I mean, working in a ditch. You know, it's not easy. It's crazy. I know. So you know, five minutes they're together, and then you know, then they go apart, and then they come back, and you know, it, it is yeah. difficult. Yeah. But, you know, this is the first. Uh, you know, I'm not on the job all the day. I'm hardly on the job at all. So, you know, I don't get any other feedback other than the feedback I just heard tonight, which I will address again tomorrow when I get to work. But, uh, you know, yeah. I, you know, I don't uh, – I, I just haven't received a lot of feedback either way. Yeah, no. It, it, it's, it's, but, it's, huh. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, you know, Ray, Ray and Nick Monty, um, you know, you guys – Always wear a mask. Yeah. And so, and you know, Nick has been really good about it. And 
you know, I mean, it's, I just don't understand why the others, others can't. Yeah, I understand, though, again, John, that, you know, some of the other guys are, you know, they're swinging shovels and hammers and, yeah. and you know, working down in the dirt. And, and uh, it is, it is very, you know, the, it is very hot and it's very difficult. Yeah, and no, I, I understand. Doing, I don't think I don't they're doing know. it out of uh, making some sort of statement. I think they're just doing it because they just can't breathe in you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 too, as well. so. I hear you. It's uh, yeah. totally difficult. Really difficult. But, you know, I mean, I mean, you mentioned after work, and, and uh, you know, they're, you know, I mean, after, what they do after work is beyond our control, obviously, but we could, I could certainly, I can, I'm, I'm certainly going to bring that up, but, you, you, know, I, you know, you're on your own time after work, but this is not right. You know, if you're going to sit around the, the, the store outside, Whatever they're doing outside, I don't know what they're doing, but if they're just talking, whatever, then that's a different situation, and they should be wearing the mask. But you know, they're they're not on my time either. But you know, it's it's you know, but I will I will talk about it with them again for sure. Okay, appreciate it. Great. Right. And when you talk about masks, you also have to look about health conditions because it's not recommended for people with asthma. So you can walk into a place and say, I have asthma, and as an employee, you can't question people on that. Or they have trauma history. A lot of the people that I know have trauma history where they were traumatic. You really can't question that under HIPAA. So I feel like it's a really fine line, and I think we need to – really do some research on it and really think about what we're putting in there and get all the feedback we can in doing that. I mean, public safety is important, but it's also all the different moving aspects of it. Well, no, I think you make some good points, and you know, your, your best one is public safety is, is important. It's, it's paramount. And uh, almost to Ray's point, a lot of these people, and no one's doing it for a statement, you know they could have asthma. They could be other other um, underlying conditions. But he's going to mention it to his crew. We will gather uh, information as of as a town uh, what type of ordinance we could or or, or should or or not uh, put put in. Um, Can it be just a recommendation? Is that is that a better way of approaching it than an ordinance? Maybe you know as a town we're recommending. Ra- I, I think that's something we need to discuss, John, and that's, yeah. um, you know, what, what is the best um, wordage, you know, and, and because yeah. if you do put okay. an ordinance, what do you have to, you know, how do you, as as uh, Callie said, how are you going to enforce it? So, you know, play on yeah, words. Do we Callie. recommend it? Do we, you know, is it worn? So let's get the most information and try to figure out the most effective way to promote um, good public health, and that's what we're all trying to, to figure out here. Right on. Sounds good. All right. Um, so, Sasha, that was um, kind of a <coughs> sidebar from your communications. Is there anything else that you wanted to share? Oh, no. Um, that was it. All right. Uh, John, what do you have for us tonight? Well, before, Sasha, on, on one of your communications, you wanted us to get in to sign some warrants or something, right? Oh, yes. So, um, I, okay, when, when are you, where is that? I meet you at the town offices type of thing? or I could lay them all out in the meeting room and let me know when you're going to be there, and I'll just unlock the door, let you in, and, and have at it. Well, if you want to let me know when you're there this week, that works as well, too. Okay, I'm I just, can do you know, that. I'm not, I'm not far from the village, and, um, you know, if you just give me a day's notice or something, I can do that. Yeah. Sasha, why don't you uh, give everyone when, um, and I think you're there most days, correct? Yes. Um, so if everyone can make a, a, an effort to get over there at some point this week, um, that way we can get those taken care of. That would be great. And thank you, Don, for uh, bringing that up. Yeah, thank you. So, so you're there tomorrow? Yes. I can um, give you a call in the morning, Don, if you want. Great. Perfect. 
Fantastic. Thank you. All right, John, did you have anything for us? Uh, yeah, a couple things. Um, I got another call from our friend, Frank Piazza, um, okay. and he was reminding me that he never received that photograph, Ray, um, of his spring line. Remember when we took oh, okay. the meeting with him, yep. he, we mentioned yep. that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I know, I've never received that either, so I thought uh, Nick was going to get that to us. Yep, I will. Uh, um, yeah, I was off last week, so I will get that out. I did finally get the drawings over to Frank today, this afternoon. Oh, and good. Okay. Send them. Um, I mean, I don't yep. know what, what that's going to show, but anyway. I, mean, yeah, I don't know what believe, he's looking for, but whatever. He doesn't believe the drawings anyways. I mean, you know, you show him what the right-of-way is, and, and he wants to know who says that's the right-of-way. It's on the drawing. I don't know what else he can Yeah, can just say. don't pay too much attention to Frank. He's uh, <laughs> searching for stuff here at this point. Yeah. Uh, what else you got there, John? And, and certainly I want you to talk about the um, – project but yeah I, I i received a letter from uh megan first an email from megan schultz and uh and i asked her to uh, write a letter she would like to um join the Moortown rec committee so it says dear members of the board i would like to formally request to join the Moortown recreation committee the committee via susan Wernken extended an invitation to me to join their group after i attended their most recent meeting Susan asked me to reach out to the select board for official approval. As a lifelong resident of Moortown, a property abutter, to an avid user of much of the town's recreational land, and an event planner by trade, I feel that I would be a valuable asset to the committee and their efforts, efforts to organize and manage the recreational opportunities here in town. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks in advance for your consideration. Megan Schultz. And she goes by Meg now. Well, sounds, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, have Meg be on the rec committee. I'll second that. John seconds. Any uh, further discussion on the motion? All in favor, vote aye. Aye. Uh, aye. All right. Sasha, if you can just send her a quick letter out, letting her know, and also copying um, Steve on that. Okay. And Susan as well, making sure the whole committee there knows. Yeah. That's great. Good. She'll be good for that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. All right, okay. John. As far as the the project, um, certainly you can see the you know the progress with the curving and sidewalk, and um, um, the only issue uh, that's come up is the big hole in front of St. Patrick's. And you know what's funny is that Ray and I both, you know, just can't recall that that hole ever being that deep. Has it always been like that, Tom? <laughs> what hole? Um, where, where the culvert, where the um, the culvert comes out that, um, well, really that that drains. Uh, it does drain some from uh, uh, Moortown School. But also um, the sump pump from the basement of the church. Church, yeah. Um, and so what they're planning to what planning to do is to um, have um, basically a, a, another culvert that would carry it back out into the the system. Another catch basin. Yeah, another so. catch basin, rather, yeah. So there'd be another catch basin there, there, and then then would would tie in with the, um, you know, with the other um, drainage. And so tomorrow we're actually it's the second meeting with Howland Brown, who we we found out that, unless you know otherwise, Tom, that the the churches, um, actually that's all on, uh, Howland and uh, Becky's property. Because um, they say that the church is the drip line of the roof, which really, yeah, 
Yeah. At least that's what they said was in their deed. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't uh, get in there enough to know that stuff. But yeah. Um, but I know that um, you know in the, in the past when we were just dealing with the sidewalk, um, and I know that the um, that yeah, the priest uh, had mentioned that it was you know any, any conversation that Pat had with him it was okay yeah so uh so it would, it would mean a, a permanent easement and that's you know that's what we're looking for with with howland and and initially um i believe that they are he, howland and becky are in agreement but we're going to finalize things tomorrow all right yeah um, so the, final, the final end result is <clears throat> would be what this catch basin is that hold the eliminated is and everything needs to be graded to it. Um, and I think it really would look a lot better than it was previously. Yeah, because how far down is it? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, from the new sidewalk elevation, it's probably a, it's going to be about a two and a half foot drop. Oh, no, would it? Wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah so we could grade it off. And, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be mobile, but it's going to look a lot better than what it does right now, uh, as long as they allow it, I guess. Yeah, and I mean, basically, um, you know, it improves their property, too. So, you know, Holland said in the past he's had to go down in there and, you know, try and patch things up with, with wood and, <laughs> and, and uh, anyway, so. Yeah, no, I think that would, like I said, that's a win-win for, for them. Yeah. I would think so, yeah. And interestingly enough, um, with Doug Henson, it was it, it, nothing like was in the plans, just to put riprap there. So I mean, yeah. it's really, really weird. That that must be an extra for the for the boys, right? The work. It is a, an extra structure. Yes, it is. Yeah, but yeah. I did tell them because it's a it's going to be a smaller structure than um, that what. We had for the project. I, I'm giving you like a different price than uh, than what we are contractually uh, obligated to do. So uh, right. it's going to be. I think our price for a catch basin on the normal in the roadway is 4,500, and and this one we're putting in. I think we could do it for around 2,500. Right. So I mean, it's still an extra cost of town, but it's not. Yeah. Uh, trying to trying to get out of it as easily as you know possible. John, yep. do, do we, we must have a contingency, right? I mean, you guys did put this whole thing together. Do we have a contingency in our in our final number? Uh, a little bit, right, Ray? There was a contingency. In, in, uh, you know, there's been some. I mean, you always find stuff like this, you know, a little unforeseen condition. Right, and, right. You know. There has been some contingencies. That, you know, I mean, we've gained uh, some money. Uh, by uh, by the milling, let's say there's like going to be a fifteen thousand dollar gain, but we also got these tanks we're dealing with, and, and uh, the flagging the flagging is going to be way over what, than what he estimated. But the sheriff's costs are way down, and uh, I was hoping that uh, we'd have a better probably by the next meeting we'll have a pretty good idea what the total contract amount's going to be. I believe. Uh-huh. What? Anything else here, John, going on? Yeah, the, uh, the other thing, too, that uh, we keep running into is disagreement with, with Doug Henson's, you know, plans. Um, and, uh, you know, that was just one example, but there have been several of them. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. so is there any Mostly. recourse on that? I, well, I hope he doesn't charge us for him coming out and redoing his plans. Yeah, I, well, that's that was one thought that I had because you know we keep going back to him and and uh, you know there was some discussion last week and I don't think he ever mentioned that he was going to be away and this week until July 13th. <laughs> but now that there's something that we're going to have to deal with tomorrow regarding that too, that you know he's not here to to answer the question. So 
Yeah, and I, I believe there's a, a curbing grade issue, another one. I think that we would kind of get an answer on since last week, I, I recall. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, well, keep on that, John, and, and Ray, okay. thank you um, to yep. make sure that you know, things don't can, go. Can you guys in the field, with Ray and John in the, in the field, can you guys make some of these decisions to carry on and, and – uh, if it's a change, uh, you know, you, you sort of acknowledge it, and, and then Ray gets his pricing together, and we can keep the job schedule going, or do we have to wait for this guy? No, no, no. We we can make those decisions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they just yeah. have to live with. <laughs> no, I think I think we can make the decisions. Yeah. I mean, when the when the designer guy gets back, maybe. You know, there's going to maybe have to be a discussion with them, like, hey, we're having all these unforeseen conditions, and, you know, we want to talk about your next invoice or something, you know? Well, no, he, he better not be invoicing us. Right. right. Well, they, they yeah. do tend to do that. Well, we'll when that comes in, we'll, we'll look at that. But, um, yeah, absolutely. Certainly. Um, all right, John, what else? Uh, I think that pretty much pretty much does it. I, um, you know, I have received emails uh, thanking me for the front porch forum uh, updates and so on. And so it's just nice people have reached out. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, and thanks for doing that. It, it is good to see those updates in there. I think people like to hear what's going on, and um, so we appreciate that. Okay, my pleasure. Thanks. Yeah, and Ray, I think the, the 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 team, the whole team is running a great job. I mean, considering the traffic flow they have to deal with uh, and getting the work done, it seems you know really really orderly and together. Yeah, I think it went well. I think you know now that we're done the drainage part, uh, uh, that was big getting that out of the way. Uh, things were a little bit slow last week because of the holiday, but uh, uh, right now I'm going to bring in. Starting tomorrow, there'll be another curbing crew in. So uh, we're hoping that we can get um, you know, a, lot, a lot of the curbing in, in the next week and a half, and then it'll be just a sidewalk project after that. Yeah, that's great. Good. So is it John? John, do you have the road, the uh, bridge up? Who, who knows anything more than, we, than what we know of that Sasha sent us, that they were going to start on June 22nd and – I mean, is the flashing sign on 100B, you know, major, you know. No, that's for the paving. That's the paving. That's for the paving. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like they've started the bridge. They were going to start on June 22nd. No, 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 August. No, but I mean, it's closing it. But I thought they had work to do before. There is. Just take take that. Sasha sent out a fairly good I, explanation. I on yeah. That. Yeah. And it so talks think, about them starting. I thought they were starting in June to do their preliminary work. But, okay. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Interested. I mean, they're, they're the ones, and they're committing to those closure dates. So whether they start, you know, what date, I don't, I don't. I'm going to try to find, I'll try to find that now, but. Oh, here it is right here. I think it's August, mid-August to mid-October, I think. Right. Yeah, August 17th, I believe, when it closes. Yes. August 17th, October 17th. Yeah. Well, so August 3rd, begin pre-construction work on site. August 17th, anticipated bridge closure. October 17th, anticipated bridge opening. November project complete. And there we go. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, thanks, Sasha, for sending that out. That was a while ago, yeah. So, I think it so was what do you the last meeting? Uh, maybe at the next meeting we could say that we could, I mean, should, what do you think? Should we think about with, with Pony Road becoming the main route? To you know, to to uh, Meadow Road and all that. Should we 
maybe have talk about that at our next sure, meeting. Sure, we can before. put that on the uh, agenda to discuss. Okay, that'd be great. Maybe I can reach back out to one of the select. Uh, uh, you know what? Let me, I think I think on that, if we want to reach out, and I um, just in general to boards, we'll do that through. Okay, we can wait board. after I meet. Right. Right. Um, okay. Rather yeah. than individuals doing that, it just uh, mm -hmm. optics-wise and just even getting responses, I think we're better off doing it as a board. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Ray, what do you have for us tonight? Anything? Uh, no, I, you know, it's just a project, I guess. Uh, anything else is good, I think, in town. Good. All right. Don, do you have anything else you want to share with us? Um, well, I'd like to sort of carry on about the town hall. I mean, we, I know we're still in some crazed times. Um, Sasha did send out something to the committees asking if anybody's interested. That was, I, I don't know if you saw that. That was, the yeah. Yeah, I, I asked her to do that again, and I'm sorry I didn't have an opportunity to reach out to you. I know we, you had talked about doing that, but again, I thought, um, just as, again, optics, as, as people looking, this is a oh, very yeah, important uh, project. Yeah. So if one person's picking out or even asking things, it's, it's what do they, they got? You know, what's their agenda? Mm -hmm. So we got to approach it as a as a group. Um, yeah. And I think, I mean, that went out a week ago, Sasha. I know John Riley has responded back, and he's put that out to his people. Um, Sasha, have you heard anything else? Nope. He's the only one that I've heard from so far. So maybe uh, tomorrow you could send out a reminder to people and say, hey, look, we just had a meeting last night. Um, this is on the select boards uh, high on their agenda. Is there? Have you guys made any decisions on who, who might want to join this? Okay. And could you also, um, just so everyone knows, because maybe I, I want to make sure we're not excluding any group, who we sent that out to? Okay. Do you, no, uh, do you know off the top of your head who we sent it out to? It was um, Planning uh, Commission. Yep. Um, Society. DRB, obviously. DRB, Planning Commission, Historical Society. It seems like there was another group. Energy Committee? No, I didn't. It's all right. Well, why don't you put Energy Committee? Um, and then obviously the library, but I've, if they have two people that would be that, they're, that are interested in, in being so, on some so, sort of committee. Right, so put the library... And also the rec committee as well. I believe the rec committee was the other one. Yep. Okay. I mean, we wouldn't send it to all the people who are on the board of civil authorities, right? I mean, that's no, 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 no. That's. But what we that's can do is, thing. we I think we should make a public once we let's see what numbers we get, what people we get back, and then um, and then we can ask for you know a number of you know two or three or one, depending on what we think is, is appropriate uh, for community yeah, we don't want members too to be involved. And, uh, you know, if there's an overwhelming number of people who want to get in on it, then, you know, we'll make an overwhelming number of board members. But, um, you know, we want to make sure we hear, hear you know, all, all people. I'd, I'd like to get some people from the Route 2 sector as well, um, you know, they don't have a lot, uh, they don't get over here that much, but we yeah. should have a little say about what goes on. No, I mean, I, I would think that one of the things of this committee or board or whatever, a task force, whatever name you want to come up with, one of the things that they, I think, w would be a charge to do is set up meetings, you know, hopefully we can have some sort of public meetings or whatever, at different areas of town where people can come and voice their concerns or their thoughts or what they'd like to see. Absolutely. Yeah, this nope. is a community effort for sure. No, nope. good. So no, it's not uh it's something that's that's continuing and um yeah. been a little work on it. So we'll continue to, to move forward on that. Yeah. I think if we can just keep picking away, it's like I said, you know, two months ago, a year kind of, we've got a year sort of and we might as well see what we can figure out. 
No, oh, sounds good. All right. Um, anything else, Don? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. All right. Yeah. How about you, Kelly? Nothing. I just reached out to Rita today about the ordinance and warrant, but hadn't heard anything back from her. So. Okay. Very good. All right. So I got um, a couple of a couple things. One, I wanted to make um, people aware. There's been a couple incidences of um, uh, graffiti uh, painted on the the roads here in town. It's up on Pony Farm Road. Um, it was Mike Farnham who is uh, the culprit. And the first time it happened on a Sunday. Oh, I don't have the date right in front of me, but. Sasha could give it to you. I had Martin go up with the uh, with the grader and and take care of it. Um, this past weekend, or sometime during this past week, there was another um, incident. It was this time it was in a red paint. You couldn't really see it, but um, I did call and make a uh, report with the state police on that as well. So. If anyone has any questions or whatever, you know, feel free to get out there now or, or um, call me offline or whatever. Yeah, I saw that on Viking on the road that day. I think it was on Sunday or Saturday or something, yeah. Yeah, it might have been on Saturday night. It happened. I got yeah. a call, and uh, I know Martin went out with the, the, uh, greater, with the greater, with the greater, the um, greater. We've also sent um, the, the family a bill services um, with time and, and uh, <coughs> expense that day as well. Whether anything comes of that, I, I don't know, but anyways, um, just so if people ask or if, or if uh, you have any questions. Um, and that's all I have as far as, as old business, I mean, um, uh, comments. Uh, so moving forward, I'd like to get um, to approve the minutes for our last meeting. If anyone has a motion for that, I'll make a motion to approve the 615 minutes. All right. Uh, under second, Kelly. Thank you. Um, any further discussions or changes anyone uh, has for us? All right. Hearing nothing. Um, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Thank, thank you, everyone. All right. Um, so we'll go ahead and move on to old business. And I do have one thing. And Ray, this is this is for you. Um, I have an invoice for Dickerson Road. If you could just take a look at, I don't know if you have. It's a little over what um, our your quote was. And so if you could just take a look at that and share, you know, you don't have to do it now, certainly, but just let us know what the difference is there. Yeah, I will take a look at that, Tom. I think I know that it was uh, a few tons over on stone, which was, uh, I think, I, you know, it was an estimated quantity. I, you know, I don't think it was. Yeah, no, I think it's fine. I just, just for um, uh, grant stuff, if we can just change it for grant stuff, I think that's more or less what I'm looking okay. for. Okay. I didn't, I didn't see the actual invoice. I uh, so, yeah. It's, yeah, it's not my. It's it's. I'm gonna say it's less than fifteen hundred dollars, so it's not a significant amount. But uh, if you don't mind taking a look at that, so we can just um, one get that uh, paid to you as well. Okay, sure. Or paid to do voice. Um, and that is it as far as old business that I had. Is anyone else anything that they wanna share? No, nope, I'm right. me. Hey, Tom. Yeah. This is Jamie Wimble. Hey, Jamie. Hey. Um, I think I'm old business. Um, I had <laughs> intended to get on at 6, but it was coronavirus time, and oh. I lost track of time. Oh, okay. So what's so, what's on your mind? So I just did Emily Wood get on it at 6? No. Okay. No. So, so there were three of us that were going to get on at six. We all forgot. So would it be all right if I just did a little library business right now? Sure. We've got a few minutes here. Okay. So the first reason that um, we wanted to talk to you was that um, Corey has submitted the reopening plan. Mm -hmm. 
the library, and we just wanted to see if there were any questions you all had that we could answer. Um, I took a look at it. As long as you guys are, are comfortable with it, we're not. I'm not there, and I'm. And based on what I read, that she had, she has a better handle on it than than what I do as far as the protocol. So it's certainly fine with me. All right. Anybody else? Any questions? Oh, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Okay, good. All right. Well, if you do have any, you know, just, um, you know, let it, if anything comes up, let us know. Send any of us trustees an email or Corey an email, and um, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, the other thing we wanted to let you know about was that um, I live in the part of town where we don't have very good internet, and I had been using the library internet a lot, but um, it was kind of difficult in the parking lot, the, the Wi-Fi getting out, you know, through all the walls and into the parking lot still wasn't always working great. So Corey had been in um, talk with Waitsville Telecom about that problem, and um, they finally came up with a solution, which was that they wanted to put up an antenna to be a Wi-Fi hotspot for the town on the town hall roof. Um, they sent her an email saying that they wanted to come on a Tuesday, it was, I believe, at 1 o'clock. So Corey doesn't get to the library until 2. When she got there at 2 o'clock and saw the email, she found out that the Waitsville Telecom person had already been there and been let into the building by the construction foreman that's in the basement. Mm -hmm. And he had already put the, um, the antenna or whatever it's called up on top of the town hall. So the good news is we now have a Wi-Fi hotspot in um, the town. Um, it should work. I haven't been down to the village. It's been a little too noisy and dusty for me down there, so I haven't tried it out yet. Um, it should work better than the Wi-Fi did by being in the parking lot and using the library's Wi-Fi. Um, but Corey's intention had been to check with you all before that went up on the roof, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So we just wanted to let you know that that had happened. Well, I, the good thing is no one's called and complained about it yet, and I haven't... I don't think anybody's <laughs> noticed it. <laughs> noticed? Well, that's the thing. I, I, I haven't been noticed it either. John's been there, so um, yeah. now will give us something to, to look at and maybe make a complaint about. So, um, <laughs> so stand, it's there. Tuned, I mean, I suppose it's not something that can't be undone, but we just wanted to let sure. you know that no, it had been it. done and sort of through, um, you know... No, yeah, well, that's nice, and I think it's nice that the Wave Skill Telecom is stepping up. Yeah. Um, I know we've had, you know, some offers from some other groups about doing hotspots. So, um, yeah, there are hotspots sure. in in all the other towns, so uh, it's nice that we have one now. Yeah, well, good. Well, thank you guys for facilitating that, um, even if it's after the fact. But uh, <laughs> thanks. Sorry, I think my cat's hungry, so let me have some noise here. Um, is there anything else, uh, Jamie? No, that was it. We just wanted to see if you had any questions about the reopening plan and to let you know about the, about the addition to the town hall. All right. Thank you, Jamie. You're welcome. Good. Um, any other questions or concerns for Jamie while we get her on the line? I, I see Michelle has joined as well, Michelle yeah. Beard. So, um, Michelle, yep. do you have anything to add or you just didn't have anything to do tonight? Michelle. Oh nope, I'm just here, uh, just just in case. I will say though, I am near the town office, and the service here is great tonight. So I don't know if that's the hot spot or what. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, now well, the school, I don't think that they don't like to have the hot spot though down near the town office because the kids in school were were on their phones. So <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, well, all right, so let's go ahead and um, uh, if Jamie's all done and if there's no other old business, is there any other new business anyone wants to chat about? 
I just wanted to bring up the um, select board meetings and getting back together as a group again. Has anybody given any thought on when that might be happening? I think that's a that's a good uh, good question. Um, certainly, we've been erring on the side of caution for everyone's health. I think um, it would be good to get back together uh, as a board, uh, and I think we can probably do that with the with the right precautions taken. Um, John, what's your what's your thought? Uh, yeah, that would. I guess that would be okay. Um, the other thing we could we'd, do we'd if, probably look like the town hall, or yeah, I think probably the town hall. We could also have public comment, um, or we could limit the number of people that come in, or we could do that all via uh, phone, right? And just have the the board meet. Um, but I think that we, would be a good start. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that we can start good, that yeah. way. And anyone that any any visitors or well, we could have we could have people come in, but uh, public comment would just be done um, over the telephone. That sounds like a plan. Yeah. Is that fair with everyone? And I know we've talked about it. I've talked about it prior, and then as we've gotten closer, just the recommendations weren't strong enough to uh, uh, to go out and do it, but I think now the way things, unless we see a big turn of events, um, why don't we plan on our next meeting, next meeting being live. So what would that look like? Just curious. Well, I think if we had it in the town hall, um, we could bring up three or four tables, um, space ourselves out, you know, at least six feet um, apart. Um, it would also be, we would invite uh, the um, the telecom or whoever does the uh, uh, the view. Um, so we'd have them there. We would, as in our meeting uh, posts, we would also have, you know, call in from six to. In fact, at any point, people could uh, call in. So we'd want to have the telephone number for the library or that number that's down in the town hall available for people to call in. Although it's well, not going to be televised live, is it? But people could stay on audio. So we could do it, um, have a phone with a um well, when they call in, like they're calling in now, Tom. Sorry, but what, like the same way people can call in now. When it's yeah, speed. we could just do that and have a yeah. have an open line, have it on speakerphone. So if anyone wants to speak yeah. up at any time, they can do that. Um, yeah. Or and on the, agenda the rest of us would, you know, spread out within the the room. And if we and we could, we're going to have guests, which I think next week we we're going to have Ray and Mandy. We provide two seats uh, appropriately spaced um, for all of us. For all of us. So, I think and it's doable. And are we supposed to, and we'll be, we're all supposed to wear a mask or, uh, during the meeting? Is that what, well, I'm, I don't know. Are we wearing masks at these meetings? And well, certainly coming come? in, wear a mask, and, and I think if, you know, okay. wear appropriate if you're sitting there, you know, put it on. Um you know, well, that's the question. I mean, you know, should we be wearing masks or are we not going to be? You know, I, mean, I don't know. I, I would say, especially if we're going to be discussing an ordinance, we should be wearing masks. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows where it's coming from, right, John? <laughs> that should be taking a lot yeah, of time. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I, again, this I think... This is Michelle and Stallone. Can I ask a question? Should we... Yes, go ahead, Michelle. Uh, I think Tuesday, I'm not really sure, but I think Tuesday is a library day. Should we um, think about extra cleaning precautions after me, like, or should I... Yeah, no, I, I think, and we had a, you know, a month ago thought we were going to do it, and so what we, at that point, Michelle, the, the plan was to have the cleaner come in prior to the meeting and do a 
cleaning so the board members or any guests that we had felt comfortable and then the morning after come back and do a cleaning so that mm -hmm. anybody from the staff or anyone uh, else going in would, would be uh, okay I think we I think we're gonna have um, her come as well so we'll just coordinate that yeah so we okay. can work together on on uh, making sure that that's clean regardless sounds good thank All you right. All right, so I'll work on that with, with Sasha, and I'm sure we'll be reaching out to Corey as well. Um, and if any of the board members have any questions or concerns, or, or Michelle, if you guys, um, or, or Jamie on I'm your board here. have questions or concerns uh, with the building, certainly let us know. So uh, I just want to, so when I come to the meeting next, uh, uh, if you need some help in the next two weeks, I'm happy to help. But my, the plan will be I'll come to the town hall and I'll be, I'll wear my mask and I'll be wearing a mask and others will be too. I mean, that's, that's the expectation what we have at this point, point, yes. That's correct, okay. yep. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, very good. Thank you, Ray, for, uh, for bringing that up. Um, is there any other new business? All right. Well, seeing nothing here in the uh, agenda of my notes, I guess I'd uh, uh, move to uh, to close the meeting. I'll second it. All right. Any uh, further discussion on that? All in favor, vote aye. 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 Well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate you taking the time tonight, um, and we'll talk thank to you all you. soon. Everyone, stay healthy. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank all right. you. All right. All right. All right. All right.